This is Unlocking Learning, and I'm Dr. Lee Zeitz. We've already completed session one. And remember, session one was where we were talking about how to go about what flipped learning is, what learning is, and, and how we actually approached that in a flipped learning process. Session one was where we were introducing what flipped learning was. What is the pedagogical background for it? And how can you go about in making that happen in your classroom? Right now we're in the interim. This is between session one and session two. And this is the time where you're gonna be watching this video. This is what we do with flipped learning. You're gonna be watching this video and developing a lesson on your own. Sounds like fun, doesn't it? And thirdly, we're going to have the session two where you're actually gonna come back in and talk about the things you did when you were creating it. Sound like fun? Well, let's see what that looks like. Let's see what it takes to flip a lesson. As a, in, in review, let's talk about session one. We were talking about what are learning and teaching. Those are very important when it comes to education, isn't it? We talked about what it takes to create meaningful learning experiences. You reflected on things that you did, and now you're taking a look at uh, how you might have that happen in your classroom. We introduced andragogy. Now this may be an old, uh, a term. Yeah. We introduced andragogy. Now that you may already be familiar with this term, but interestingly enough, as you go through and you see the characteristics that they're talking about, the things then we that talked about flipping learning and learning. Lecture versus home shows up in your classroom, doesn't it? Lecture is where you give information, and homework is where you try to make things happen. Well, actually, when we flip learning, what we do is we record our lectures so the students can can consume those at home, and then uh, they can come to class and do the homework there. Uh, we, we also took a look at some examples that Dr. Hansen did when he flipped his chemistry class. It was a video about what he did and how amazing it was. We had an interview with him as well. And then we covered nine strategies for engaging learners in in-class activities, even experienced a few of them. Now that we're in the interim, you should have received a follow-up letter. And that follow-up letter will give you some information about how to approach creating your video and your flipped classroom. When we get back for the session two, we're going to review steps that you took when you were flipping your classrooms. We want to see how you organize your materials. Maybe there's some new ways you did it, or maybe you have some things you can contribute to us. We want to learn about your experience in creating engaging slideshows, or what you learned when you were creating effective videos. Finally, we're going to give you a chance, actually throughout the whole session, you're going to have the chance to work, meet with your educator uh, colleagues people in your field to discuss your work, your ideas, and maybe future work. I have three goals for this video. The first one is to help you plan a flipped lesson for one day. The second one is to help you organize the activities and materials for that flipped lesson. And the third is to create the video your students would watch to help them prepare for these in-class activities. Let's watch a video about how you can create engaging slideshows. This is a four minute video where she's identifying these points. Now, I do not like using lots of bullets and things like that, but what we can do is if we have these points listed to the left while we're watching a video, they can use those for context and understand how things are going. So we're gonna watch this for the next four minutes. Here are some of my best tips for creating effective slides for your presentation. You want to start with your title and make sure to include your name. If you're presenting to an audience other than your class, you might include a quick something about yourself. So here I've included my name and my job title. Tip number one, your presentation should tell a story. Start with a hook open with something that is going to intrigue your audience and prompt them to sit up and take notice. From there, take some time to really think about what story you're trying to tell. Your goal should be to paint that picture through the visuals and text on your slides. You really want to keep your slides as simple as possible to make the most effective presentation. First off, pick a color scheme and stick with it. Search online to find great color combinations. The font you use is also really important. Just like you wouldn't want to use colors that clash, you want to use complementary fonts. 
Maybe the most important tip I will share with you today is to limit the amount of text you have on a single slide. You are giving a presentation, not creating lecture notes for your audience to read and study later. As soon as you move to a slide, your audience will have the tendency to instantly read every word on that page as soon as it's displayed. If you project a bunch of words on the screen, your audience is going to be focused on reading the text instead of listening to you talk. Your goal is to have one main idea per slide. This is key to keeping your audience focused and following along with the point you're trying to emphasize. What's on the screen should be what you're talking about. On that theme, use bold images and text to keep your audience engaged. Visuals can be particularly effective in achieving that goal. If you're talking about Twitter, add an image to your slide and use text sparingly. Your audience will use the visual clue to keep focused on what you are telling them. Be aware of color contrast to really make your presentation pop. If you have a dark background, you want to use light text. With a light background, use dark text. Again, search out color combinations online that work best together. When presenting data, it's really important to use effective charts. Don't use too much data, and what you do display, make sure it's visually appealing and legible. If your data is talking about percentages, you probably want to use a pie chart. Make sure to limit the number of slices to no more than around six to keep things easy to read. Vertical bar charts are best to show changes in quantity over time. For example, if you want to compare data over several years, a vertical bar chart like this works really well. Horizontal bar charts can be used to compare quantities. You want to limit the number of bars that you use to keep things easy to read and your audience engaged on what you're talking about rather than trying to read and analyze everything that's on the screen for themselves. Finally, line charts are a really effective way to demonstrate trends. Most importantly, if your presentation doesn't flow, you will lose your audience along the way. After you've made all your slides, it's critical to go back and look at the order. Does it follow a logical flow? Are you telling a story to engage your audience and to keep them interested? You began with a hook to capture your audience's attention, but how do you liven things up in the middle to keep everyone engaged? Perhaps use a bold visual or something light to keep the energy going. Don't forget to conclude by summing things up for your audience at the end. Circle back around in your closing. Repeat the really important stuff. Provide a call to action if you want your audience to do something with this new information. And that's it. Those are some of my top tips to creating effective slides for your presentation. Good luck! That was really good. Now I want to point out a couple of things. I didn't start this using telling a story. I, uh, I should have, but I didn't. I'm trying to keep things simple. I'm using, uh, I'm limiting the, the bullets and those sorts of things. One idea per slide. I hope that what I'm showing you is something I can use to demonstrate how these work. Now in this case, you'll notice I could have done this with five bullets, but instead I use five icons. Identify the concept. Identify the outcome. Select an in-class activity. Identify necessary knowledge and create the flip video. Think about these videos. Just the pic—I mean, these icons, just the pictures themselves can help you remember what they are. Bullets don't do that. So identify the concept. Okay, let's go to the next page. Notice I took that bullet or that, that icon and put it over here. Identify the concept is straight out of this page. That makes it simpler for them to re remember. So this week, I, what I'm going to do is I'm modeling what we're doing, what I'm doing in a flipped classroom to prepare you for our uh, July 20th session, but I want you to think about how you would do it. First of all, th this concept, what I want people to learn this, this week, is how to create a flipped lesson. The outcomes. These are the outcomes. Notice we have the, the, uh, the target up here. The outcomes. Design a plan for flipping a lesson. This is what I'd like you to do. That process is to identify and design an activity you'll use, the pre-class activities, the pre-class video, either and then discuss those ideas with your educators. We'll be doing that at, as part of the class. Remember, this says to identify what, what is you want to do for an activity and design it. I know you have lots of things to do this summer, but you can at least sit down and identify and prepare these things. You don't have to create them. And this actually should say to create the, uh, the pre-class video as well. You don't have to create them, although that would make it even more effective for you. 
this week's activity, as I said, this week's activity is uh, what you can do is you can, it's going to be for people getting together to talk. Um, once again, if you want to find out ideas for this week's activity, go to this page, which is the strategies for engaging learners in in-class activities, and you'll see a whole variety of opportunities, things you might want to try out. Creating a flipped learning um, video this week. There's four parts to this. Now, these four parts are in this section called um, making, making it happen. This is that whole process of how to create a flipped lesson. The first one has to do with context. Provide your, your students the context as to why you're doing this, which is what I did at the beginning. Secondly, provide them with the content. Now, I've provided, with you, provided it to you through video. I've provided it to you through, uh, and I, I really didn't get heavily into the content right now, but I've given it to you in, in written format. But you want to spend no more than seven minutes talking about each part of the content. We have a, a limited uh, attention span as to how long people can remember things. I am doing this whole thing as one video. Typically, you want to keep these videos down to, say, seven minutes or less. But we're putting this all together so you can see how it's done and how I'm using different formats to help break things up as we go. Instructional materials. You want to provide them with the instructional materials that they're going to need so they're preparing for what's going to happen in the activity. And then you have the classroom activity that actually happens in class. The video, provide things you put in your packet, provide uh, context. You have the content. The instructional materials are part of your packet, and the classroom activities where you actually use it. I hope that's clear. Uh, tips for effective videos. Now, we've talked about how to create uh, effective and slideshows. I have a two minute video here that really does a great job about showing about how to create effective videos. Let's watch this two minute video. Instructional videos are powerful tools to enhance student learning at home. They allow students to learn at their own pace and free up time for teachers to support students individually. But too often, they lose their effectiveness because educators make common mistakes. Research has found that videos are often too long, too confusing, too unengaging. Avoid common pitfalls by following these five tips. The longer the video, the less likely students will pay attention. Research shows students start tuning out after about six minutes. Instead of having one long video, think about breaking a lesson into short segments. Too much text on screen can overwhelm students. Instead, use visual cues like arrows to indicate key concepts and diagrams to help explain ideas. Students learn less when they listen passively. Throughout the video, encourage students to reflect and take notes. Check for understanding by incorporating questions and short quizzes. Organize your video into chapters. That way, students can find a section quickly when reviewing materials. Students will be more engaged if the video feels authentic. Use a casual tone and speak encouragingly. And remember to just be yourself. Make students feel like they are in your classroom. But I, I want to go back and, and point out something here, and that is that we are, I'm using short videos here. Notice that none of them are over seven minutes. Um, I want to make things as clear and concise as possible in the way I'm organizing the video. Encouraging active listening, asking people to, to think about ideas. I, I didn't incorporate that here, but it is something we'll be talking about uh, when we meet on the 20th. Um, break into chapters or sections. In other words, you have different parts. We started out and we had the intro. And then we went in and started talking about what's been happening. So in other words, we have different parts that people can go to. And, and in some cases, I'm using a video to cover it. In other cases, I'm talking. And be yourself. Well, there you have it. Now it's time for you to apply what you've learned. You're going to flip your own lesson. You're going to make learning more meaningful for your students. And hopefully have a whole lot of fun with your teaching. It's time for you to go out and make a difference. I look forward to seeing what you have when we get into session two. Bye.